Uh, this is my latest roadside find. I'm gonna rip them all in half for studs for the little cabin and for collar ties. And some of it would be waste because some of these aren't in good shape. But we're gonna rip them all in half anyway. Found these two guys in my shop. They weren't very stealthy. They could have woken the dead with all the racket they were making. I'm sure you remember all the whining I was doing about my foot issues. I finally ended up going to an acu acupuncture guy and he seems to have helped but he sends me home with all these freaking needles in my head and tells me to leave them there for three days and i usually leave them for about three hours and out they come so the stump i burned last week burned really well it was right here and i would fill it with dirt so now we have a wider path we still got a couple of trip hazards but i can't get that trailer to make that turn i turned as sharp as i could and i still got the tractor in a ditch sort of so man it seems like i could get it closer all right well we're set up we emptied the trailer it had a lot on it because my son needs his trailer back so i had to bring everything involved with the treehouse even though half of it we don't need yet so we got a lot of lumber laying around the trailer's empty i'm gonna finish the deck i'm gonna replace this temporary board finish that over there i got four 12 footers should be way more than enough i'm putting clips on every rafter i call these hurricane clips they probably have a better name um my concern on this structure is not that it's going to collapse it's that the wind might take the roof away because it's so wide open <clears throat> so i'm doing what i can to securely fasten the roof to the frame and because this stuff is framed with pine pine split so easy that uh even though these nails look good it wouldn't take much to just split this bottom off like this nail did so anyway every rafter gets a clip and that's for my peace of mind and I used the hex head screws, which is kind of a sheet metal screw, whenever I can. Because with my shaky hands, they're just so much easier to deal with. Yeah, they are kind of tempered, so if you over tighten them, they're going to snap. But I think all the uh, modern screws are like that. So I just put up my first collar tie. These tie the rafters together. And they're pretty important. They, keep the, uh, they help prevent strong winds from lifting up the roof. They keep, uh, they help prevent the rafters from sagging. And in my case, especially, they help prevent the rafters from pushing down and squatting this wall and leaning this wall out. So uh, typically on a house, we put them every other rafter, but that was a long time ago. No telling what the codes are now. Approximately one third of the way down. Um, I'm gonna put them on every rafter because I'm using smaller material. I got a pet peeve though. I hate it when they're all different wonky they're not all lined up. So I know it looks crooked. It's because of the tree. It's level and it's the same from both ends. So somehow or another, I'm going to do something to keep them all in the same line, which is kind of easier said than done. So the method I decided to use to keep them straight, I took a little scrap of wood and on the first one, I butted it up to where you see right here and I put a mark on the scrap so now I take this scrap and put a mark on both rafters, one on the right and one on the left. And that's, that's my guide. So then I take the collar tie and because the rafters are bouncy and this wood is so hard, I was having a hard time nailing them and getting them not to move. So out come the clamps and the time I spend dealing with the clamps and getting the boards in the right spot and clamped down tight is time well spent because it would take me longer fiddle, fiddle farting around trying to get them nailed in the right spot with, uh, without having them clamped. So this is uh, how I'm doing it and uh, they're pretty much almost perfect. If you get down the end and look at them they're all in a nice flat plane which is what I like.
Okay, three down, two to go. Stripping the roof, I started with one on the outside edge, um, and then I put one uh, directly over the beam, just because, and then I put one up top for the ridge cap, and then I kind of measured this, the distance that was left and divided it into thirds and put two more strips. Um, doesn't really matter how far they go, um, somewhere between two foot and three foot. If you get them much more than three foot and you stand, and you stand on the tin in the wrong spot, you can kink it. So these are mostly uh, 24 to 30 inches apart. The tree house is, well, started out 16 feet wide and then we have the, uh, the little triangular parts that stick out. And these boards are 16 foot, so I'm having to pull them back two rafter spaces from the end and let and just kind of waste some. They are shooting for a six inch overhang, but mostly I have like a two foot overhang and I'm gonna cut them off later. Uh, it's a little bit wasteful, but I didn't want any of the joints to end up in the same spot. And I didn't want any, you know, tails hanging out that weren't going back at least two rafters to make them uh, strong. Got it. <laughs> I tell you, you said got it. Huh? <laughs> I got it. <laughs> So what'd you just do? What, what did I just do? I just pulled a, what is it? Two by six? No. What is it? Five quarters by six. Five quarters by six. By 16. For the, what are they called? I don't know. Strap stripping, stripping, strapping. Something that the metal roof is going to be attached to. Yes. <laughs> so all the strips on the roof, we left long. And then I plumbed up from here, got this point there, and I did the top, plumbed up from the outside of this um, round column and got a point and I clamped this piece of siding, which is fairly straight. So now I'm gonna put a two by four up there and clamp it. And uh, if it's right, I'm gonna nail it or screw it. It's gonna be hard to nail, it's gonna be kind of bouncy. Give it a shot. So all that talk in the last clip about how I was going to do it is uh, not how I did it. Um, there's a vertical 2x4. It's about a foot tall to my right. I got my hand on it now. And it's an extenuation of that column. It goes straight up in the air. And that's the key right there. Now, this is a 12-foot treated 2x4. So it's not heavy, but it's too heavy for me to hold out in midair with my hand while I'm messing around with a clamp or a screw gun or whatever. So you can see there's a five quarters by six to my left. Well, I got my elbow on it right now. That's a temporary board and it sticks out past the overhang. So I have something to rest that uh, two by four rafter on while I'm getting situated. And on the other end, um, sticking out above the beam that's holding up the bottom of the rafters, I did something similar. So I could get the rafter out there and set it in place and then relax and move my ladder into the right spot. And here I have shoved up the rafter until it's pushing up on the overhanging five quarter by sixes, the roof, the, the stripping for the fiber, for the sheet metal. And I got a clamp on it. I think it's in the right spot. And now I'm gonna go down to the bottom and check to make sure the bottom is okay. Um, I shove it up and clamp to the uh, uh, to the stripping again. That's that's the top of the rafters, the stripping. And then I'm take a little board and scribe it. Now in this case, on the other side I cut a vertical, but on this side I cut a wedge that fits underneath the rafter, and holds it up. Uh, up top, it's screwed to the vertical uh, little short two by four, and then there's a longer one at the point where the two rafters come together and you can see I have an issue where the rafter on the back and the rafter on the front they're not jiving up and that's because why is that because 
that's because the center of the structure or the center of my two bars which is the point going out over the past the trees is not centered with my ridge and I never thought about this in the past I probably could have uh, shifted the pointy part of the deck over a little bit and made it centered with the rest of the deck but I'm not that smart so I got a, I got a problem and I dealt with it later on it worked out okay should not be a, a major problem so here I'm clamping up the uh, barge rafter the overhanging rafter it's a 2 by 4 sucking it up tight to the stripping and once I get it up tight I'm gonna get a scrap board I'm gonna scribe the uh, I'm making a little wedge and I'm gonna cut it and jam it up in there and put a screw in it and the bottom part of the rafter is forever and the top part it just has a clamp on it but I'm gonna uh, get out there and lean over and put some screws from the outside in and then it's gonna be forever okay it's been a good day with the help of my bride we got these pickets up we got those pickets up so there's two sides that are safe for little ones um, I got all the stripping strapping strip stripping on the roof ready for the sheet metal I got the collar ties up and I got uh, hurricane clips on all the rafters and then I started working on the overhang which at first seemed really really difficult but then it's not really I put a couple of vertical two buys on top of this which was existing and put the rafter on the outside of that ran it back kind of you know kind of matched it up sucked it up sucked it up here and screwed it and then put a block to fit to hold weight and then i put um a i don't know if you remember from my videos on getting stuck in the mud these are those pine trees that i was putting under the tracks and they didn't rot they've been laying on the ground they didn't rot but unfortunately I don't have one long enough for this side. I have a bunch of shorties. So that's my first conundrum. Really just uh, first world problems. My second conundrum is that this uh, ridge does not line up with the center of the steel bars. And I didn't think about that until I was doing these barge rafters. But I think I can work my way around that since it's so high up and nobody can really see it much. I think I'm just going to taper it from there up to the top. And since the sheet metal will be broken by this tree. So that's kind of a first world problem. That's just cosmetic. Now I got a big problem. I started this tree house in the winter when all the trees were bare. And look at this tree. It's like green, green, green. And this tree made a couple of leaves. They turned brown. It hasn't made any leaves since. I'm afraid it might be dead. This would be a terrible setback. I don't know what to do. Um, well, obviously, at some point it's going to start dropping branches. And at that point, I'm going to have to spend money and get a tree guy. And I guess we can cut it above the roof at a slope and put some tar on it to seal it up. And then I guess it'll last a long time yeah i don't know um i'm looking at some chump change to get a guy out here in the woods to cut this thing down now he doesn't have to cut it up and he doesn't have to haul it up off he's got to be able to get it down safely and not smash my roof yeah this is a this is a serious conundrum anyway i got work to do i'm gonna keep work, working on these two barge rafters and get this all straightened up and this end i'll have to wait for another day because uh another week probably this one's a little more scary because it doesn't have any fall protection like those steel bars kind of granted but yeah okay okay this is how i'm dealing with um i'm gonna call this a jack rafter or kind of like a valley rafter um, it's clamped in place and it is it's hard to tell here but it is up above the ridge and the bar drafter by a factor of a five quarters by six so it's a, uh, basically an inch high now the top should be a four on twelve but just in case i'm scribing it uh, with the 
straight edge and a pencil. The bottom is a weird cut. It's real steep and I don't know how to calculate that. So I'm scribing up with a framing square on both sides um, and I'm gonna connect the dots on the ground. It's gonna be way steeper than a 45 so I'm not gonna be able to cut it like normal with a skill saw. I'm gonna have to cut it from the top and then from the bottom. Good fit. Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, this gable end, if you want to call it that, is finished. I had to put in what I would call a jack crafter on each side because the span from here to there is pretty far. So we added that. And then I added a couple of pieces of stripping up there because the sheet metal roof will be cut around the tree, so it's going to be kind of floppy. So we added some of those strips. I put some verticals over the iron bars because that will get siding from the outside. From here down to here. Just just because. Um, yeah, and I got this side with the handrail. This side, I'm missing a post. I don't have to have a post. But I want a post. So I don't know. I may just put a 2 by 4 on there for now. So we can finish handrail. So man, super happy, super tired. Uh, if this is the end of the video, thanks for watching. If it's not, I'll say it again later. I'm not sure. This is the wedge that made my unalignment problem aligned. Um, so basically I just bent up the roof here. Um, since we're using sheet metal and since it's so high up in the ground and nobody can see it and sheet metal bends really easy to solve the problem so when you look at it from the front you're going to see the gable centered over the steel bars and everywhere else the gable will be centered over the ridge okay fun job today we're going to start the little cabin i'm gonna leave that overhang for another weekend we got the size I'm gonna have a door right here so i don't have nails in that corner but it's square and it is roughly seven foot by seven foot Framing up for the window. Debbie's putting screws in, taking them out, putting them in, taking them out until 
She gets it right. But she'll never ever give up on anything in her whole life. There you go. Since I had my sciatica episode three months ago now and I'm still not quite over it, she has decided I cannot work by myself. She has to be with me at all times like a small child. But anyway, I've enjoyed her company. She's game for anything. She'll try anything. And she's pretty strong for an old lady because she swims three times a week for the last 22 years. So, uh, yeah, she's actually pretty good help. And I've enjoyed having her around. But she won't let me get up on the roof. So I don't know what we're going to do we're gonna go when that time comes. Okay, this little wall is framed up. And we're going to put siding boards on it, which are the... the uh, boards I found in the last trash pile I read in, and put the window in because we both want to see what it's going to look like before we leave so you know ordinarily we'd have kept on framing but we're going to go backwards and get this window up well, I got her here messing up but she put in a lot of nails and it's not easy because the wall's kind of bouncy and this old What's that pine this old trash pile pine is hard as a rock so it's no easy feat getting nails in here well we finished the wall and it doesn't really show from anywhere unless you're up here. But you might recognize that window. It came out of my old sliding doors on my workshop. And the boards came from the side of the road. And I thought I had a whole lot of them, but we barely finished this wall. So um, anyway, we're kind of out of steam. This might be it for the weekend. Um, like I probably said before, thanks for watching. And I'm kind of out of... These boards came with the redwood boards. And I'm pretty much out of those. Well, I got, what, three left? I got a bunch of five quarters, but I don't think that's strong enough for a stud. So I probably got to buy some boards and rip them in half at home and bring them. But uh, they don't have to be treated, just two by fours. Okay, thanks for watching. All right, I'm sorry, but this is just way cool for a kid's treehouse. I wish we had enough of those boards to go all the way around, but we got to do something else on the sides. Probably one day we'll have to tear this old deer stand down and use that plywood. It seems to be in good shape in spite of its age. I'll use that for these backsides maybe. I'll need more stuff. And of course I need to overhang on this backside. We put it off and didn't do it this week. But there's always next week.